Hello. Hi. Come on in. Come on. Where's your kid in here? You weren't raised in a barn. Sorry. When you the northeast, that's one of the first things that you hear in the wintertime out of your parents' mouth or grandparents or whatever the case may be. Hi, come on in, sit down, grab a chair. Hope you brought a beverage. I got my little Christmas muggy with my beverage in it for today. To those of you that have been here before, welcome back. To those of you that are new, boy, did you pick a good time to stop in. Hi, my name is Connie, and you have just entered Connie's little corner. And yes, I'm all decked out. I got my Julie wig on. I have got, I've got a comment. <laughs> Little mushroom dangly earrings on. I got my Timu top on. My Timu bottoms on too. And I got my Timu headband. I decided to put this on with Julie because Julie has no combs and she won't stay on my head. It's a heavy wig. She's 26 inches long. Anyway, today we're going to do tips and tricks part seven. I am going to teach you how to do a, how to get a refund. When Timu wants you to do a return, so we're going to do refunds without having to do a return. This is, I figured, is a good time to do this because with the holidays, people have been doing a lot of Christmas shopping. You do have 90 days to return your items. So for whatever reason, if you need to do that between Christmas and holidays, this may help you out a lot. But it will definitely help you out the rest of the time. A little basic housekeeping. I don't know what's wrong with my glasses today. I'm getting a lot of glare. Please ignore the glare. <laughs> Focus on the daisies or something or sunflowers, whatever they are. If you're new, my code right here, AFC95851. That will get you two things. It'll get you a $100 coupon bundle and it'll get you 30% off your first order. Check down below in the description, though, there are... Uh, guidelines for how to get that 30% off as well as time frames that go with it. If you are watching this on your TV, then use your phone and go down and do that. But if you're also watching this on your if you're watching this and you have your phone free, right here, this nice big thing, just scan that code. You will it'll take you to the exact same place. So if you're watching it on TV and you're not using your, you know what I'm saying? You have options. I'm all about having options. So next you would team with the fastest, the easiest way. Okay. I'm going to start this off right off the bat with a disclaimer. If you've been with Team for any length of time, you know everything they do, every policy, every procedure, every guideline is subject to change. Right now, they're even making changes to when you go into your account. It'll list out a few things, and then all of a sudden, it's breaking them down into little boxes instead of a big, long column. So they are modifying the layouts. They're modifying your orders, how to find price adjustments. See, we're savvy, and I like to keep you posted on these things. And Timo is catching on like, oh, these consumers are smarter than they thought. Yeah. Hold on. I'm starting to feel a little like Axl Rose, if you know it. <laughs> a little too far. There we go. A little too far in the big old head. just like swishing in the eyebrows. <laughs> okay. So, I know you all understand that. You've seen the changes, and you've seen the turmoil and the chaos that, it, that happens when those changes take place. If it's a major change, you will see me post something in my community post. So, always be sure to click on... Uh, my little image to take you to my channel and I just scroll across a couple until you see the word community. That's where you'll get it. If you are subscribed to my channel and you hit the notification bell, anytime I put a post in there, you're going to get that pop-up notification that I've made a post or I put up a new video. So that notification bell is very important to keep you informed because I'm, I haven't seen any other YouTubers that deal with Timu and do these kind of videos like I do. Wow. These informative. I mean, come on. This is tips and tricks number seven. <laughs> yeah. Rack them up. Whatever you need tips and tricks on, I want you to put down below in the comments. So anyway, I said, wait. Back to the disclaimer. 
because team will changes things. What I'm going to show you and what I'm going to tell you in this video is not set in stone. If you look at this a month down the road, team may have changed it. But at least this is a starting point so that you understand options and you can figure out how to get there. And if you can't figure it out, then you drop me a comment or use my email. Put my email address right up here for you on this little corner at gmail.com. Questions about anything that I haven't put in a post or that I haven't addressed in a video, email me. I, it's fine. I will respond to everybody. Some of you have already emailed. You know I answer your emails. Okay? So that's my disclaimer. Subject to change. As of the making of this video, this is what's going on. I also will suggest that you pause the video when you see an image up so you can get a good idea what it is. I can only leave these images up for just so long. All right. First off, you are going to go into your orders and you're going to select the order. Excuse me. Now, remember, this is about refunds and returns. So you're going to go into the order and you're going to get the little chart that comes up. You'll see it right here. You're going to scroll down and you're going to select return refund. All right. That's pretty basic. Some of you have already done that. It's pretty easy to find. Now, if the order was split into two, which happens on a lot of things, it's going to ask you to select the package. So you're just going to pick the package that your item was in. If everything came in one package, that's not going to pop up for you. You're not going to see that come up. So don't look for it. What you're seeing here is only if your order was split into multiple parts. Now it's going to give you a pop up and it's going to ask you yes or no. Was your package received? Yes or no. The reason being is that Hemu's logistics team and the people that deliver your packages, it's not instantaneous communication. They're going to deliver your package, whether it's the post office, uni, uni, UPS, whatever. They're going to deliver the package, but they have to report that it's been delivered. And they do that based on their guidelines. When they report it's delivered to the headquarters, then the headquarters has to report it to team. So there could be a gap of even as much as a day or two before Timu even knows that you did receive your order. You might find a delivered order still showing up under shipped in your accounts, and that's common. So there's nothing wrong with that. That is why they ask you this question, yes or no, is your package received? Okay. Now, when you answer yes, obviously, you're going to select the item to return. And yes, I have a little cheat sheet down here. If you think I have all that in this old head, well, thanks for giving me credit, but no. <laughs> I have my cheat sheet. Actually, um, let me show you a little bit. A little spreadsheet. I have things itemized out. I don't want to miss anything for you. Okay, so where was I? So we're going to select the item or items that you want returned. So, for example, um, the first things you're going to have to do, and this is really weird, it's going to ask you what the, uh, on the select the item, when you click on the item, and you'll see what I selected here, it's going to ask you for your reason. It's going to ask you for the quantity. And in my case, this was a single quantity, but another one that I did last week had a quantity of two. Reason, quantity, and then depending on your reason, it's going to insist you give it pictures. If your reason is something like an inaccurate web description or missing parts, the bot is smart. It knows you're not going to be able to give it a picture of something like that. But if you're using a, an image like uh, or a reason, so example, I'm sorry, hold on. If you're choosing a reason other than those two, you're going to want to be prepared to upload a picture. Just know that. So if you don't like something, and I'm going to give you a perfect example at the end of this video, if you don't like something before you throw it away, you have to go through this return process, uh, unfortunately. So, yeah. All right. And then it gives you a little section that says comments. Keep it simple. 
Don't put your emotions in it. Oh, my God, this item came, and it looks like crap. And hold. No. Okay. Wrong size, item stained, disc forward, missing piece, short, sweet. Remember the kiss rule? Keep it simple, stupid. Right? Because they get stupid. Not you. They get stupid trying to figure out what you're telling them. You have to narrow things down with Timu as if you're talking to a two-year-old. Right? You, Some of you already know this, right? Some of you have been beating your head up against the wall every time you deal with customer service. Well, just consider me the padding between your head and the wall. Okay? All right. So those four things. The reason, the quantity, the pictures, and your comments. Once you have done that and you submit, it's going to pop up and ask you to confirm that this all this information you just put in. It wants to make sure it got it right. It also that will also give you an opportunity if you did choose something wrong, you can go back and fix it. Um, so you don't confirm it, you just go backwards. Okay. Now it's going to give you a pop-up and it's going to say select your method. If it wants you to return an item, this is what it's going to give you. And this is the part that cracks me up. I had returns that I needed to do that I requested for a couple of items were only like a dollar something a piece or two dollars a piece. I'm talking under five dollar items that they wanted returned. Okay, wait. Now, my time, my aggravation, my gas to get to wherever I got to go, my inconvenience to have to figure out whether or not I can get a label on my phone or whether I had to take it someplace to get a label. What if I was disabled? What if I didn't have a car? What if I couldn't drive? What if there was no way for me to get to where I need to go? Because the options they give you when you look at this, you select your method is either the post office or UPS. Well, neither of those are in walking distance to me where I live. And where I live, there are no buses to get to that place. You have to drive to everything. And if you don't drive, what are you supposed to do? Okay. So if you're going to do return, and it pops this up, asking you to select the return method, you are done trying to even get your refund this way. And don't let the dollar amount fool you. Because I have done re refunds without returns on items that were under $2 and one item that was over $20. So don't feel obligated that you have to go crazy trying to figure out how to get this item back to them. You're going to stop right here at this point. You're going to just X that out. You're going to literally click the X, close out of it. You are not going to finish. You instead are going to go back to your accounts. You're going to scroll down for customer service, right? You're going to find your customer service. Contact us. Don't choose anything. Click on the customer service, then scroll down to the bottom of the next list, and you'll see that bar that says contact us. You're going to click on that bar, contact us, and the bot's going to pop up. Some of you already know this, right? So when that bot pops up, what you're going to write, and this is the only thing you're going to write, nothing more, nothing less. Very simply, refund without return. Exactly as I wrote it right up here. Refund without return. No other words. The bot is an idiot. What's a better term? The bot will always and only pick up key words. So you writing, waiting time, wasting time writing a sentence that says, I need to get a refund and I have no way to return this item. But the bot does not know what the heck you're talking about. And you do not need to get a live person at this point in order to resolve this. All right. So you're going to write refund without return, just as you see right here. Got it? Okay. I would not steer you wrong. If you've done my tips and tricks before, you know, pretty accurate about this stuff. Once you do that, the bot is going to ask you to confirm your order. Basically, to make sure that 
the order you want to do a refund on is what's showing up on the screen. If it's not, you don't confirm it, right? When you, let me back up a little bit. When you went uh, into your customer service, into your orders, it asks you to select the order that you have the issue from. That's an automatic thing. And I do apologize if I didn't specify that. But when you do that, and then it'll say, then you scroll down, it'll say, contact us. So it knows what order you're talking about, but it needs to confirm it. So it'll pop it up in your face and it'll say, confirm order. Yes, you confirm the order. Right. After that, now this is a little backwards from what it was doing before. It's going to ask you to choose the reason. And this is where you go and you choose your reason. Inaccurate web description, website description or inaccurate web description is the most common reason, um, unless, of course, something is broken or if it was the wrong size sent or it's just the wrong size, missing parts. But the most common reason is usually inaccurate web description. Choose your reason, whatever it is. And then it's going to ask you, ask you excuse me, I don't want to start talking in better uh, ghetto language. It's going to ask you. To select the item or items that you want to return. So first it's a reason and then it's the items. Where in the other steps when you started this, it was the items and then the reason. Just follow what the bot wants you to do. <laughs> and in this case, because you're doing refund without return, reason, then item, or items. Now, it's important if you had quantity, like in one return I did, I had a quantity of two. It's important that you make sure you're ch you're checking that little quantity box. If it's it automatically populates to one, it, it won't be there if you only have one. But if you in order to say two of something and you want to return both of them, you want to refund both of them, it's going to ask you to specify two that you want to a refund for both of them. Makes sense, right? Why would you return one and not the other unless only one was broken or only one was missing? But if it's something like an inaccurate website, a web description, that kind of would apply to both, right? Hold on a second. Mm. Nice tea, once again, heavy on the ice. Okay. So now that you've selected your items, the next step is refund without return. And it's called an after sale solution. And you'll see where it says right up there, after sale solution. It gives you options. You want to choose refund without return. I think it's the very first one listed. I, I can't see the image because the image is on the screen. I can't see. So make sure you choose refund without return for the after sale solution. Now, once that's done, it's then going to give you a pop up for the refund method. It's going to ask you, well, do you want it to go to your original payment source or do you want credit on Timu? Well, of course, people like me, we take credit on Timu so that we can shop some more and not have to pay out of our pockets. This typically will work. This process will typically work unless for some reason you chose a reason that triggers the bot to demand the return of the item. But wait, we can still get past that. All right. So let's say the bot is in agreement and they give you those pops up after it says select the item. And then it says, OK, you, you select you want a refund without return for the sale after sale solution. Then the method that you want. Once the um, once you choose your method, then it'll immediately is going to give you a confirmation of how much it has refunded you, and you don't have to return the item. So your inconvenience has been removed. You still got your refund, and they don't discount it. It's the same refund for what you paid. The only reduction might be is if you used a coupon in that order, 
that may they may adjust the amount. It depends on what else is left in the order. You will at least get the initial purchase price back on it. I haven't found any missing funds. Even if I pay for something on credit, I still got all the credit back. That's another reason why I always ask for it to go to my team with credit. That way I make sure I get the full amount back. So you'll get the confirmation. And if you go into your account and you scroll down and you look at credits that's listed in your tree, you will see the entry for the amount that they credit you. It's instant. There's no delay. All right. Let's talk for a second about what happens if the bot disagrees with you and still asks you to return the item? Right? Because you know that's a possibility. Bots are not smart. That's when you're going to type simply these two words. Live person. That's it. Again, do not ever get wordy with the bot. You need to apply the kiss rule because this machine is an idiot. It doesn't think it's programmed. That's it. You're dealing with a computer program. So all you're going to type is live person. At that point, the bot is going to tell you that they're transferring it over to a live representative. And then, of course, as you know, well, you may not know, but those of you who have done this, a live person, a real live person will come online, thank you for your patience, and ask you to give them a second so they can go back and review everything. Wait until they finish. Don't type anything else. You don't have to type, okay, thank you, whatever. No. Just sit tight. Keep your hands off the keypad. All right. Let them do what they got to do. They will come back and they will then give you options. They will either give you an option that um, maybe it asks you a question. In other words, uh, why can't you return this item? Or I'm sorry, but the vendor requires the item be returned. So what you can do at that point, and this is always worked for me this worked for me with an item that was over 23 dollars that they still wanted returned i typed to them simple and i separated this by dashes okay and i wrote to them these reasons semicolon or colon rather these reasons no transportation um disabled no transportation disabled uh, violation of U.S. Department of Health regulations. Now, when they saw the last thing, because you're dealing with a live person, they actually asked me, I'm sorry, what do you mean by violation of... You? Here's something you guys may not know. Different countries have different regulations. But in the United States, if you purchase an item or clothing, or an item that is to be worn or affixed to your body in some way, shape, or form, and you've done that, it's not allowed to be resold. So it cannot be returned for resale. But if they're going to return it and destroy it, you know team was not going to do that. You know their vendors are not going to do that. Depending on the item, we're going to bring it back and sell it probably without washing it. They're probably just going to put it right back in a package and do something. So things like undergarments, bathing suits, um, certain things that you like might wrap around your body, like uh, like a TENS unit or something that literally sticks to your body. Department of Health in the United States has regulations that these items cannot be resold. You cannot even take a used bathing suit and take it to... Uh, a donation center. Legally, they cannot accept it. If they do, that's a problem. They cannot accept underwear, bras, uh, bathing suits. Anything that touches the Netherlands is a no-no, right? You get that? So when you tell the customer service person that, hey, this is against U.S. regulations, this cannot be returned for resale. 
uh, because of health department regulations. When you bring up the word regulations or laws, they stop. Right off the bat, they say, we're sorry for the inconvenience. Here's your refund. Okay. If you are unsuccessful when you're dealing with the customer service rep, if they still give you a hard time, you've told them you have no transportation, you're disabled, uh, you have no printer, you don't have a smartphone, maybe you still have an old-fashioned, cheapy little disposable phone, you can't get, you know, uh, labels and things like that, you don't you don't have the means to print a label. Uh, you have no way to get the UPS or you have no way to get. Timo is not going to send somebody to pick up this item. They don't do that because Timo uses so many different delivery, different couriers. It's not in their arrangement. It's not in their budget. It's cheaper for them to refund you the item. If they still say no, you can tell them. And because you're dealing with a live person now, you can get a little more wordy, but try to keep the emotions out of it and keep it very simple. I am unable, I do not have the means to bring this item to the post office or to UPS. It is not physically possible for me to do so. That's all they need to know. It is not physically possible for me to return this item or for me to take this item to UPS or USPS for return. They have to respect the fact that you can't do that. If you say it repeatedly, I usually say it, I've only had to say it, repeat myself twice. If you repeat yourself twice and they still insist on the return, just tell them, nope. No, and close it out. Get out of the chat. All right, completely close it out. Don't return the item. At this point, you have a couple of options. Number one, you can send me an email. Let me know what's happened, that you were unsuccessful, everything. What were your reasons that you chose, whatever. A lot of times the reason they say no is because of the reason you choose for the return. So you have to be very careful about what you use. Yes, you want to be honest, you want to be accurate, but there may be a different selection that will change how they look at things. My watch is ringing. <laughs> Vibration on my wrist over here. So it could be what you chose. That's the most common reason for them to stick to their guns and say no. It's the reason. So be careful about that. So you have a couple options. As I said, you can either bite the bullet, not return it, keep the item, donate it, give it away, sell it on marketplace, throw it away, whatever the case may be. It's at your discretion because that was your funds and or your credits that you used to purchase it. I had a couple of items that I did return and I'm going to put the image up here for you. I bought these two little candles. They were not expensive. The two of them together was like under five bucks. They wanted me to return these. I used inaccurate website description, which is 100% what it was. They wanted me to spend more time and more money than what these candles were worth. These candles were the most putrid smelling things ever. I had to put them in a Ziploc bag, in a bigger Ziploc bag, in a trash bag, and set them outside of my house in the trash bin because I didn't care whether or not Timu was going to refund them or not. They were not staying in my house. They smelled like a airport restroom that hadn't been cleaned in a month. You get my drift, right? That is not a smell. And even though I had, the smell was so pungent, and it was so strong, even though I had it triple wrapped, you could still smell it. It was nasty. So I did all these steps that I just walked you through. And when I saw they wanted me to re return them in order to get my refund, that's when I stopped. I went back through the customer service route, customer service, picked my order, contact us. 
And I specifically said, refund without return. Bot took me through all the steps. And the bot decided, okay, give me a refund. Or as the same system, when you click on refund return in the beginning, wouldn't give me a refund. It wanted it returned. Never believe the response you get the first time. If you're getting, if you're being asked to return an item and you don't have the means to return it, take the route I've just explained to you. I have yet to have anybody tell me, because I've given this in private information to people who were complaining about this, having to return this, that, the other thing. I've given them this information. It was at their suggestion that I do this video. Okay, so I don't know of any max. I don't know of any maximum on it. I don't know how it applies to demographics around the country. Or if you're not in the United States, you can try it. It might be different in Australia, United Kingdom, whatever the case, you know, Canada. It could be different based on where you live. But these are the steps I'm suggesting that you try instead of just willy-nilly having to inconvenience yourself or whatever and run to the post office uh, for these little items. The 90-day return still applies. It doesn't matter, and especially with Christmas time coming, you may have bought items a while ago that you were giving as Christmas gifts, but it's still within the 90 days, so you will still have this option. And of course, as I stated in the beginning, this policy and the ability to do the refund without return is subject to change. It's not set in stone. Your, let, your other option that I mentioned is send me an email with all the information. So if you're not willing to eat the cost, if you're not able to actually send it back, if you don't have a print, let me give you an example. If you have a printer, right, you can always put the label on it and put it out in your mailbox. You don't have to go to the post office. It will get picked up that way. But that's the only easiest way to do it if you don't have transportation. But if you don't have a printer, that's not an option. So decide if you want to keep it. Are you able to return it? Is it not worth you going through any issues that you can just toss it, donate it, give it away? If you're still stuck, if you have questions or you want to figure out what other options might be out there, shoot me an email. Again, right up here, Bonnie's Little Corner at gmail.com. Give me an email. Give me all the details what you selected, what the item was, what it cost, what they want you to do. I don't care if you want to send me screenshots. That's fine. I will do everything I can to help you out. Okay? So, you now all know how to do, how to request a refund without needing to do a return. What do you think? It's pretty cool. I love coming across these things that you can do. I don't worry about the kids. I don't, I don't worry about what you can't do. What you can do, though, is if you like this, if you think this is going to help, please spread the word. Share this video because not everybody watches my channel. If you're subscribed to my channel, you know I love that. If you're not subscribed, hello, you can remedy that. There's a little button that says subscribe. See the dimples come out? How happy it makes me when I think about getting new subscribers. This is the kind of things I bring you. I just don't, I'm not just a shopping channel. Yes, I bring you Timu. I bring you other products from other companies that I do sponsorships with. I bring you tips and tricks. Um, I bring you information. And I, hopefully I bring you a little bit of fun. So thumbs up, like, share. What do I say? Get it out into the universe. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss when something like this comes up. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Now, go do your thing. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. In about two days, you're going to see the Christmas video come up. So I'm going to extend. Today is the 21st of December. This is your last chance. I still have a little editing to do. But if you do want to submit your holiday decor pics to me, again, Connie's Little Corner at gmail.com. 
Get those into me before the end of the day, December 21st, and I will include them in the video that I'm going to release on the 23rd. And that video is going to be 100% nothing but wonderful, smile-making Christmas decor. Right? Okay. Stay comfortable wherever you are. Make sure you stay hydrated. My tea moon mug. Doesn't matter what you're drinking. Just drink. Yeah, you didn't hear that from me, right? <laughs> Paul, else please stay sweet, and I will catch you again in a couple of days.